everybody, Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations. Welcome to the channel. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead, hit the button, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be kept informed whenever I post a new video, because I do at least one a week, hit the bell and it'll let you know. Today we're doing a very quick but very fun little um, craft. So for those of you that do follow me, I do a lot of furniture painting and I stage them up for photos and a lot of the staging items end up going into the shop as well. And, and I, I do have a love of bottles. So, you know, bottles of different shape and sizes and colors and looks. And right now, Beachy looks are a lot of fun, and I and I would really love to have more beach glass in my bottle collection. I stage a lot and decorate a lot with bottles of different sizes and shapes. I tend to collect a lot of the old vintage bottles because of their unique shape. Obviously, if I'm getting a lot of the um, dark brown or some of the really cool greens, I'm leaving them alone and leaving them as is. These ones are all clear, and I want a more unified look. But I want them to be more of a beach glass look. And as I went to do this, I thought I'd shoot a quick video to show you how. So you too can create kind of the beach glass look for some of your home decor if you want. The magic item is my ever faithful and trusty Mod Podge. Now, for this, for the Mod Podge, I always say Mod. Sorry, I'm old, that's what we used to call it. I use the matte because I want that beach glass, that tumbled glass look. It has that matte finish, so make sure that you do the matte Mod Podge and not the glossy. All right, so small little tip. In which case, all I'm doing is pouring this into a container. And I'm not going to need very much. Now, I want to do two different colors, so I'm going to do two at the same time. I want to have some that are more blue and some that are a little bit more green so then I have the combination to be able to use. I could do one or the other. I could mix and match and I really like that mixed look. So to do this, and I have a stir stick for each, I am just going to be adding some really inexpensive from um, Michael's. I'm just going to be adding in some, some basic acrylics. And... I have some different color tones because I figure that I'm going to have to kind of mix and match to get a little bit of the color that I'm looking for here. But I'm starting out with, do these have names? Yeah, this one says Viridian. I, th I think it's like a, a, to me it's an aqua color. And I have a lighter one and I have a slightly darker. So I just want to see kind of how this mixes up. And I wanna mix the two colors simultaneously. So before I start color fixing anything, I want to um, see about creating my green. Now, I will say this. I didn't have a green that was any color that I wanted. So I kind of grabbed all of them with the idea that I'm definitely gonna to have to color mix. So I'm starting with a light olive and just doing a bit. So this is all by just feel, right? This is, this is you just kind of go in and see, but I want to do them both at the same time so I can see how they're going to look together. So you can see the light olive is a little too olive. So let me add some oxide green, just a tinch to darken a little bit. So this is where you get to play. You know the color that you're after, and maybe maybe you wanna do this technique, but you want it to be in oranges, or you know colors that are gonna suit, or pinks, or you know bright chartreuse greens. I mean, whatever whatever's working for your color decor is what you're looking for. Okay, so that darkened that a little bit, it's not white where I want it. All right, so let's try adding a touch of, this is all just a, 
and experimentation. I'm adding just a tinch of bright green and it really doesn't take much paint at all to be able to tint these. Okay, that's getting a little bit more where I want it. So you can see I'm gonna have these two colors. Now bear in mind that when you do them on your glass, they're all gonna be slightly translucent still, right? You're still gonna have um, kind of light still. It's not gonna be solid opaque. It's not gonna be uh, fully translucent, kind of half and half. They look wonderful if you wanted to do them in, um, oh, let me just grab this over. If you want to do them more in like a pedestal, right? If you did this technique with this and then put a candle in it and you get that uh, kind of that luminescent reflection coming through, that would look awesome too. So don't think you just have to do bottles for this. Um, okay. I think that's gonna work. I think this is a little greener than I was thinking originally, but I'm kind of digging it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it. The things that I have, I have some sponge brushes and I have some just basic sponges, right? So I'm just looking at using these to be able to stipple and create a little bit of texture. I'll get the paint on. Now I'm just thinking, which ones do I want? So I have two bottles that are sort of different shapes. This is a Patron tequila. This is a Jack Daniels bottle. So, you know, you've got friends that drink or, you know what, if someone in your household does, save the bottles. Um, don't know what the heck was in this. This one also says Jack Daniels. So I'm just kind of separating them out with the idea of um, the two colors being similar shapes in there. Now I have this really cool one and this I got from an auction. So one of the things often auctions will have uh, mixed boxes of just bottles. And um, so I buy them. <laughs> so I get some sometimes cool clear bottles and then some maybe apothecary blue ones, um, some brown ones. So a bit of a mix. And uh, so these clear ones I'm going to use. So. Um, so I have this big round one, this triangular one I'll hang over here. And then I have a little mid-sized one, which I don't know. It's from Detroit, Michigan. And then this little odd shaped one. All right. So I've divided them out of my table. So I have a rough idea of what I'm doing and it is as simple. Let me do it on a big one so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just dipping my brush in and I'm just going to paint it on. Okay, so already I'm putting that on and I'm thinking, ah, oh, that might be a little light. So let me take my darker blue. Oh, that was a lot more than I wanted. Scoop a little bit out, stir in that tinch, and see how that goes. Okay, that's a little bit more. I'm still looking for that soft blue, but I just need a little bit more depth to it. And you're just painting this on. In essence, the Mod Podge is um, a glue, right? So. You could use the, you know, the old white craft glue. You could use that to do this as well. So again, if that's what I, I just have a lot of Mod Podge in the shop here because of um, decoupaging. But if you've got a lot of the white glue, go with the white glue. It works too. And I use it, I just do this straight. So I use it straight. Some people will, um, some people will dilute it a little bit. Now I've just taken my sponge. This is just an old car wash sponge that I've cut up. I've dipped it in and now that I've got a coat on here, I just want to sort of pounce a little bit of texture on here. I don't want that smooth painted look. I want it to just look a little bit 
um, rougher, a little bit more tumbled. And so I'm just adding that texture on now. Once I've got that paint on, this is gonna give me that textured look. And I just do it around the whole bottle. These ones with the lids <laughs> are super easy because it gives me something to hold on to. Um, but when you don't have a lid, just stick your finger down in there and use that instead. Okay, and now just set it off to the side to dry. Let me do a green one and see what that's gonna look like. Let's do the big ball. So a different sponge brush, and I love these sponge brushes because I'm just able to get them fairly inexpensively and can just, I may or may not have just flicked paint all over my sweater. Okay, I'm just looking at that. Okay, I'm gonna like that. I'm gonna like that color with this. So again, we're just getting all of this painted, this paint tinted glue all over our bottle. And then we'll go back and we'll stipple this. So easy. So this is something that you know, if you don't mind your kids getting covered in glue, it all washes off, right? So maybe have them do it outside, hose them down afterward, but they can have a lot of fun doing this as well. And the other thing that you can do is, with this, is you could tape off areas. You could put round stickers on the bottles. And then once this is all finished, peel that off and then have a clear viewing area, right? So an, an area that um, you don't have, in which case now you've got these little peek through areas if, if you wanted. I just want plain for what I'm doing for decor purposes, but you can do some, some cool designs. You could, if you've got a Cricut machine, you could um, print out words and then peel those off afterwards. So you've done all your painting over top and now you've got the clear word showing through, which is also very cool. And especially if maybe you're doing some kind of a pedestal clear um, glass element. All right, and we're gonna put that one aside. So. You can see the difference in terms of those two. They're gonna be great colors together. We're just gonna leave them to dry. Now, once they're fully dry, and I leave them overnight, you could do a second coat if you want. Um, because I want them to be fairly translucent, I'm not going to. Bear in mind that this is Mod Podge, so if it gets wet, it's going to start to soften up again. To protect this, this is not gonna be something that you would ever put through your dishwasher or you know, dump in your sink with hot soapy water and leave. But uh, you could just lightly clean them off with, with a damp cloth very quickly and they would be fine. You could um, protect them a little bit further by spraying them with a clear matte acrylic. So again, we want that matte look. I'm not going to do that with mine because I'm mostly just using them for decor and I'm fine with just using it as slightly damp rag just because I find that even sometimes the matte acrylics are still a little bit um, shiny and I'd rather stick with something that's a little bit more matte look, but I'll see what they look like when I'm done. So all I'm looking at doing now is just carrying on painting up the rest of my bottles here and uh, doing the same thing. So what I'm gonna do is I will show you all of the finished products and how wonderful they look when they're all staged together and uh, creating a little bit of a tableau on a piece of furniture somewhere. So stay tuned for the reveal, but you can see how quick and easy this one is. Hope you're liking this, guys. Hope you give it a try. It's one of those, you got a couple of empty wine bottles around, 
Yeah. Turn them into some decor. So have them, having them staged together, having single blossoms sticking out of them, you know, some tulips from your garden right now with some of the spring be beautiful, but just a nice, fresh, classic kind of beachy look or even with some, some candles. I have one over here, right? That's a little bit of a darker blue. This was just wide open and uh, sticking a little tea light down into that is gonna be super cute out on the back patio during the summertime. As they start to dry a little, you're going to start to see, I don't know if you can see, that it sort of kind of starts to bunch up a little bit, but really what's happening is that the Mod Podge is starting to dry and it is going to dry clear. So it goes on looking like you have a thicker coverage than you may. So once it dries to kind of a sticky, tacky kind of feel, um, or you can let it dry completely, then I will maybe go back over and you can see I added in one little vase because I wanted an uneven number. <laughs> and I only had an even number of bottles, so I thought a vase would be good. So you can go and add additional coats on as it's drying, even after it's dry, to be able to get the level of coverage that you want and that you need. I find that this also helps break up wherever maybe the paint started to, I'm gonna say gather a little bit, where it just looks like it sort of um, seemed to glob back together. Um, it just kind of helps deal with that. but just starts to smooth it out a little bit and I will maybe go back um, another time with it just to get the coverage that I'm looking for or to spot over wherever there happened to maybe be a smear that I had missed or something. So don't think that you're stuck with one go or however it looks you can go back and you can add more and this will dry faster on the bottle than it dries in your in your little cup so you've got a little bit of work time with it but know that your brushes and this are going to be drying fairly quickly too so that's why i usually wait for it to be just at that tacky stage to be able to um add on my next coats just to be able to smooth them out a little bit get a little bit of better, better coverage that's how how easy this one is so super simple definitely worth a try great even for taking your old um jam jars or spaghetti jars or canning jars or you know the ones that you would just normally throw away in the recycling great way to be able to um, make them super cute pop a little tea light in put them Put them on your patio when you're entertaining. It's a really nice, fun way to be able to create a bit of a beachy theme in your backyard. Enjoy.